year 2000, the city of New Orleans gained an amusement park of its own in the city's lower ninth ward. In 2005, it was flooded by Katrina and right away ever since. I'm Lindsay on this episode of h &L Blue Sky. We don't see what the future has in store, but a future that never came. <laughs> Around the Great Recession, a company called Southern Star Amusements wanted to inject the Nickelodeon IP into the park. Depending on your reader, you could have Batman and Jester, or they got the SLC in one as they originally hoped. Katrina would have killed the park whether or not Six Flags controlled, in my opinion. This is probably a little warped towards a world where the park got the SLC. But yeah, let's get on to the foundation. This would look a lot like the Nickelodeon re-theme of the Mall America in Mall America's Camp Snoopy, where most of the rides would be Nick-themed, but not all. Jazz Plaza will remain untouched aside from selling Nick-themed merch and a theater at the front to maintain a local flair. Good Time Gardens will get a more fitting name for the Nick IP or simply just called the Catering Pavilions. Kids Carnival will be rethemed to the Nick Noggin Nick Jr. block shows with the addition of a suspended coaster called Rugrats Ra Runaway Raptor by Jester as seen in Pius Sportsman's Paradise concept art. Jester could be called Nickelodeon Slime, slime Streak and it trains flip forward. Anyways, back to Kidra. The playground is rethemed to Wubsy's house from Wow Wow Wubsy. Zinger Swingers rethemed to the backyard, and Beadville Airport becomes Tommy's Takeoff. Rex's Rail Runner is rethemed to Hey Arnold. Frog Hopper themed to Swiper from Dora. Cajun Collar is themed to Go Diego Go, and Little Easy to Oswald. The bus ride is given a new car based on the boat used by the Wonder Pets, with a Samba Tower added theme to Miss Spider's Sunny Patch Friend. Mega Zeph would go on an extensive retrack and it would take on the Pontiac Train Beach name and would be based on a classic amusement park like the original of various Nick IPs implemented. Mad Rax would be rethemed to Danny Phantom. Jocko is initially overhauled with the Jocko animatronic removed. The Drop Towers are rethemed to Cat Dog. King Chaos and Voodoo Voodoo are sold for parts if possible since they were already removed from the park as well as Crazy Crew, Sky Coast, and Sp Spillway Splash Out. Voodoo Voodoo is replaced by a Zamperla Disco called Avatar Airbender, where the Sky Coaster is replaced with a new restaurant and a larger shaded space in front. Daisy Lizzie is scrapped, Beach Bang Up renamed Crazy Cars, Big Easy is themed to the Nickel and Real Wheel, each car is themed to a different character. Zydeco Scream is rethemed to Jimmy Neutron as Jimmy Neutron the Blast Coaster with new trains from Vekoma. Ponder Train Flyer stays in its re-theme but moved next to Ozarka Splash and the whole area becomes themed to the Wild Thornberries. With the flyer called Wild Side, that's the rest of it, it's the title of the area is Wild Thornberries Outpost. Ozarka Splash is renamed Wild Thornberries River Adventure. Muscat Scramblers rethemed to the Season 5 episode Fool's Gold. Arrow maintains its name, but it's integrated into theme and the show, and the pirate ship is themed to the season 3 episode Island Trade, where the restaurant sitting as an epilogue story mementos from the other Thornberry adventures. Spongebob will replace Pirate Store 4D with Bikini Bottom built on the site of DC Superhero Adventures, where you also get a rock and tuck and a driving school. The carousel from the other side of the park is moved and restored for this area, where they got Batman or the SLC as originally planned, it would share the name with Rock Bomb Plunge at MOA. The park opens in May 2008, right when the Great Recession hits after an originally projected July 2007 open. There we show is based on Devil Dare and the Wild Thornberries. For 2009, another children's flat is added in the Nick Jr. area based on Fresh Beat Band. However, the park shrills and the park is rebranded. As part of this overhaul, Pond Train Beach is renamed Nick Toons Boardwalk, and Rock Bomb Plunge and Jimmy Neutron are merged into a new air and space themed area. Rock Bomb Plunge is themed Top Gun, where Zygo Scream is now Borg Assimilator. Madden is only between Condor Flats at DC and Area 72 at King's Island. Cat Dog is rethemed Face Off. Muscat Scrambler is removed in September due to long-term effects from Katrina and is replaced with a Garth Sauer spinner called Fairly Odd Coast for 2011. Rear Wheel's name is restored to the Big Easy, but the IP integration remains. Powers now appear in the park with a new stun show arena built in the in this airfield area. In 2012, Magnus gets a full retrack and some steel supports replaced in hopes of preventing the issues with Fool's Gold. The park starts a Halloween event in October with three scare mazes. One in the 40 Theater, an open air maze near Avatar Airbender, and a third on the site of Dodgem. The Pondering Beach area is rethemed to Zombie Beach, Wild Thorn is rethemed to Wicked Woods, and Nicktoons Boardwalk, now part of the Pondering Beach area, has a new as an IP scarcity based on Paranormal Activity 2. In 2013, the original site of the Wild Thornberry's Wild Side is replaced with a Zampera Air Race integrating to the airfield section. Wild Thornberry's River Adventures also removed following the same years as Muscat Scramble with the Wild Thornberry's IP removed. The Thornberry Theater is converted to Haunt only. Seasonal shows are added to the lineup. 
In 2014, a new log was built returning to the film's original land from 2000. While it's highest themed into the nearby SpongeBob area where the rest of the rides are revert to their pre-Katrina glory with old names returning and an overall menu for the restaurants on that side of the park. During the off-season, the park is used for an NCS New Orleans episode for a mass shooting that occurs in the park. Imagine what happened at Kennywood during Halloween 2022, but on Network TV in 2015. An officer tries to stop the gun, but becomes one among the dead. Jocko is also reaching to a more friendly Power Rangers IP. The ride is now loosely based on the legendary battle where Gessinger's helped fight the Armada. It would probably feel similar to the Justice League rides that Six Flags Parks installed around that time. For our 2016 season, a water park is announced for the north end of the property called Paramount Beach. It is with a wave pool, lazy river, mat racer, and a body slide tower with a drop slide and two body slides. A new show based on Interstellar debuts in the old 40 theater with Mads also gets reprofiled by the Gravity Group. Due to Hurricane Nate, the park's time and end season overall are cut short. However, this was just a minor delay before the park's largest expansion yet. 2018 introduces a new land based on original IP. Filling the gap between the theme park and the water park is Tollstone Point. Based on a band of orphans who gain a knack for engineering repairing things, there was a classic rise edition of a Zamperla disco called Dizzy Lizzie and a Zamperla Endeavor called Skylab. Capping off the area is a family thrill Zamperla motor coaster called Tollstone Cycle Coaster. It is a custom layout that is colored to the scale of Vekoma's versions. While not prized by enthusiasts, it's perfect for families. For 2019, Azorka Splash is rethemed to the new Dora the Lost City of Gold movie, only with small improvements. The water park is also added to the Halloween event. The park originally planned to add a mock power splash and Christmas operations for 2020, but the park never operated due to the COVID-19 pandemic. In March 2021, its name is revealed to be Slime Splash and will open in 2022. Slime Streak is removed to avoid confusion. That fall, a water coaster and family raft slide are announced for the water park. Enthusiasts flock to a mock power splash in the US as the other, Aquaman Power Wave, won't open until March 2023. It doesn't place in the Golden Ticket Awards, but its unique orange track is rather eye-catching on the park skyline. The Power IP expired during COVID and it was not renewed with Hasbro. Following Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves, the park goes to D&D weekends in May 2023, and Zampera Nubilez is at a total some point called Gearshift, as well as a kids area and catering pavilion overhaul. Face-Off is rumored to be removed by the end of the season, but will focus on a power injury placement for 2024 after being damaged by Hurricane Ida in 2021. The park also closed for the remainder of the season due to damage in the region and the mediocre attendance overall. So moving for an update, spiritual successor to Jocko's Mardi Gras Madness, but others fear it could be a new IP. Possibly Dungeons and Dragons, based on the reception of the film and the event attendance, or an ugly property due to the Nick Jr. areas being nearby. So the King is showing the challenge of park existence, but the IP integration makes it a regional juggernaut. I've been loosely following the status of this park since 2016, 2017, and finally seems to have something going to happen on site, but I think it always fall through again. What do you think about the, this time, this timeline and lineup? Tell me in the comments, and follow on Instagram, Twitter, Mastodon, and subscribe to my Substack for bi-monthly articles, link in the description, but until then, comment, like, subscribe, and strike, strike the bell.